It's the adventures of the superhero organelles converting biomolecules to ATP energy and sun energy to biomolecules. It's the mitomitochondrion and the capable chloroplast. Okay, well, maybe they're not superheroes, but they are very important in energy converting within the cell. So I'm going to tone it down and let's take a look at a plant cell. Plant cells have both mitochondria and chloroplasts. Mitochondria are going to be the organelles that carry out cellular respiration. Cellular respiration converts chemical energy in food, like the bond energy between carbons in a biomolecule, to ATP energy. And then this is used by the cell to do cellular work, like transport of substances across a membrane. Chloroplasts are photosynthesizing organelles. Photosynthesis is the reaction that is going to convert sunlight energy to chemical energy. So it's the process of making chemical bonds in a molecule like sugar. Here we see an animal cell with its mitochondria. So plant cells have both chloroplasts and mitochondria where animal cells only have a mitochondrion. Let's take a closer look at the structure of a mitochondria. Here we see a mitochondria in a eukaryotic cell. The mitochondria contains two membranes which form two intermembrane compartments. An intermembrane space is the narrow region between the inner and outer membranes. This membrane encloses the second compartment called the matrix. This is where materials necessary for cell respiration are located. Cristae are the folds of the inner membrane and they contain proteins involved in cellular respiration and ATP formation. The mitochondrial matrix contains mitochondrial DNA, ribosomes, and many enzymes that are going to be involved in cell respiration. This is a nice figure of a mitochondrion showing the outer and inner membranes, the matrix material bound by that inner membrane, the crista, ribosomes, and it also shows not only the transmission electron micrograph or TEM view, but also tries to depict the three-dimensional view through the, through the cartoon. So remember, mitochondria are referred to as the powerhouses or the power factories of the cell. And the reason is because they take chemical energy in bonds, break those bonds, and make ATP. And that ATP becomes the energy currency that the cell uses to do cellular work. All right, let's take a look at chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are the green bodies that we see in plant cells. Here we see an LOD and the green bodies that are moving inside of the cell are chloroplasts. And they have their own structure as well. So let's focus in on a chloroplast and begin to look at its arrangement. Chloroplasts have a double membrane that partition the chloroplast into compartments. Between the outer and inner membrane is a thin inner membrane space. Inside the inner membrane is a thick fluid called the stroma that contains the chloroplast DNA, ribosomes, and many enzymes. The inner membranes are arranged in interconnecting sacs called thylakoids. And thylakoids are stacked like poker chips and each stack is called a granum. And it's in the membrane of the thylakoid where we find the chlorophyll pigments that are used to trap sun energy and the other proteins 
that are involved in the reaction of harvesting that energy and converting it into biomolecules. So just for fun, when we think of chloroplasts and photosynthesis, we typically think of plants. But there are few animals that have chloroplasts in them. A salamander, some aphids, and then the sea slug. So let's take a look at the talk about the sea slug. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Hello, this is Hank Green, and welcome to SciShow. You might have noticed that I talk a lot about how great plants are, and why shouldn't I? They're autotrophs. They can harness the raw, untamed power of the sun and use it to make food for themselves. Pretty impressive. So why can't animals do it? Well, oddly enough, some of them do. And in just the past few years, researchers have been discovering animals that seem to be able to harvest sunlight for energy. Take, for instance, the eastern emerald Alicia, a sea slug that looks like a big floating leaf. It lives along the east coast of the United States, where it just hangs out eating a specific kind of yellow-green algae. It's been known for a long time that this slug had a special relationship with the algae, but until recently, nobody knew that the slug was actually using the algae's genes for photosynthesis. See, the slug eats the algae to absorb its chloroplasts, the organelles in the cells that actually do the photosynthesizing. But in order to turn the sunlight into chemical energy, the chloroplasts need a whole set of specialized proteins to help. So the slug has lifted genes from the algae that allow it to make these proteins itself. Nobody's sure exactly how this happened, but we do know that these slugs pass those algal genes onto their little baby slugs, which only need to eat about two weeks of the year. The rest of the time, they're just soaking in the rays.